Hello everyone, welcome back to number three, or part three, of us solving lots and lots of tactics on the woodpecker method. So this particular one, we have a very, very difficult one. I, I, I did a little blog about this in on chess.com, um, where I looked at the fact that some of these easy puzzles aren't really all that easy, and this is a particularly tough one. So um, I remember when I first solved it on my first uh, run through on this one, I was like, how the heck are you meant to get this one? And yeah, it is a tough one. There's there's a lots of things going on and our little our little checklist might not work on these things, but we'll go through it anyway and see what we can do. So if I'm looking at the position on face value, lots of things going on. We're actually down um, a pawn here and also oh that's it actually but the problem we've got is we've got this horrible checkmate in one fret and it's near impossible to try and defend against it um, we could play this rook here this queen back here but the problem with this is there could be maybe a few exchanges we've then given ourselves a potentially isolated pawn we're still down a pawn as well Black's got a very good endgame, put it that way. So we've got to find a way of blocking this threat. So you know, although we look at all the checks captures, sometimes actually some of the moves could be just trying to parry their threats and do something else in return. Um, if we're looking at a dream position here, this is a pretty dire sh situation that we are in. Um, but we have a potential saving grace, that being if, let's say, this rook were to ever move from this square, we could potentially um, throw in a, a either a perpetual, or if, let's say, this queen were to move away from this square, we can capture the rook and be winning, right? So with that in mind, it's a very tough move to find this one. But eventually, basically, it's bishop to e4, and that's the idea. Black has to capture this 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 bishop, and by doing so, he allows us to deliver the perpetual check. Uh, because oh, another thing as well is we've we've moved this bishop this queen away from this square. So uh, this this queen was protecting the square. So now we can play the move bishop here. After bishop recaptures, we've got a very nifty petrol check there. It's uh, it's a very tough move that one because that one's quite that's a tough one to find. Um, but as I say, sometimes the tactics aren't actually being able to win a move. It just actually just sort of survived the position. And there, okay, the draw is to be honest with you the best position we could ever have in this particular exercise. Right, let's go to number 12, hopefully a little easier one for you. Okay, so with this one, um, we focus on the fact that if I'm looking at all the different technical things, what, if you're looking at the position on face value, I can see that this king isn't necessarily well placed. So there's got to be some sort of tactic involved with these pieces here. So I'm going to first have a look at some of the checks. So we've got, uh, if we look at in total, we've got this rook here. And we've got this one. We've got the queen coming here or here as well. And also there. Okay. So if I capture this rook here, does that do a whole lot? Well, king captures back. I can't really see any good follow up to that after that. So I'm going to ignore that one. This one here as well, again, I can't really see a great follow-up to that one. He could take with the queen, he could take with the uh, the king. But um, what about the queen captures? So this one doesn't really work. The rook goes here, and against this one, rook takes as well. So I don't really like that one either. But I'm quite liking a look at this uh, this h6 one. So I'm going to have a explore this one a little bit further. Because there's not really a whole lot of squares that this king can go to. So if the queen comes here... We've guarded all these squares already with the rook, so there's only two possible moves. He can go back to here, or he can go over there. Okay, so after this happens, I've then got another forcing continuation here, and that is potentially this check here. And after queen comes there, 
wherever this king goes to, if it goes to either g1 or uh, h, uh, sorry, um, g8 or h8, the queen can come to h7 and deliver a del horrible checkmate because it's to relinquish the defense of it on h7. So lots of things to think about, lots of things to visualize. So now I'm going to go here. Rook comes there. Bish bash bosh. We've delivered the checkmate. Right, so let's have a look at the next one. So, uh, black to play on here. Okay, so if I remember with this one, um, a thing to focus on is if I'm looking again at sort of dream positions, if this bishop was not here, I could potentially take this rook. So currently it's actually pinned against this rook, kind of. But of course it can capture this bishop. So that kind of that sort of you know loses everything but have I got a move that can move this bishop away but force it to come over to you know another square where it allows us to take us well thankfully that should hopefully give you a hint with this knight here because there is a potential forcing move here with the knight coming over to this square which will then hit the queen onto e2 which forces the bishop to come there and then the bishop takes this rook. Okay, so we're going to do that. That looks good to me. Everything else kind of doesn't really work. We can't really take anything. Everything's quite well defended. The king's not actually that badly placed. And although we've got these light square weaknesses, we haven't actually got like a light square bishop to really take advantage of them as well. So it's not not really all that good. All right. So again, that's a little bit of a tough one. Um, when I think I think I failed on it the first time I did it because it doesn't look. You're looking at, I'm looking at the checkmates and go, oh, is there anything really forcing? And there really isn't. So, and that's when you kind of go to this one and go, well, really, I'm just going to win a, be up in a slight exchange here. Uh, but sometimes moves like that are enough to win positions. So, uh, there we go. All right. So, black to play on this one. This one's a tough one. Um, with this one, we have to um, look at the precarious place of this king number one and then we've also got to look at the um, you know the close proximity of the king to the queen um, I go on an interesting tangent here there's a there's a saying in another uh, strategy game now a shogi that you should uh, want you should never place your most powerful piece near your king because potentially it can become susceptible to tactics and in particular in something like shogi forks and you know drop forks and uh, other things are very very common and um, a similar uh, pro, uh, proverb can be uh, applied to this situation because this king is close to this queen it kind of creates a lot of tactics that we can involve with it and one of them is the fact that if I was looking at a dream position here, if I got rid of this pawn for whatever reason, I'd love to have my rook down on this square because there's not really anything that this, this king can do. This queen will have to jump in the way to try and defend it. And after it does that, well, we're going to be up a uh, an exchange there. So a, a rook and a knight, although oh, quite a lot. Between the two of them are eight. A queen is worth nine, so we could happily say that we're ahead in the position. So with that in mind, is there a way I can get rid of this pawn? Well, if I capture here, this queen captures, but as soon as the queen moves away, it's going to be relinquishing the defense of e, uh, e1, which will allow us to then check. The king here hasn't actually got any good squares it can go to. It's only got the back rank to move along. So already this is looking pretty promising. So this will come here. We're going to be winning a pawn. And we can also potentially follow it up with our other rook coming to d8 as well and just start hammering into the position. So I like the look of this. So bishop comes here. Now, okay, this rook is now defending. So it looks like everything's relatively safe now. But again, we can apply even more pressure, rook to d8. And you can see here now we've got so much pressure on this. We're going to throw in the check, throw this in again. And because the queens had to come here, we're now going to be up and exchange in this position. So this is a totally winning position now. 
All right, last one, and I think we'll we'll stop for this video. So, okay, with this one, we're gonna need to look at the fact that although this king position looks pretty good, he's got this back door open. Um, this back rank is actually not very; it's very very weak. We're controlling quite a lot of squares. Um, on oops, the bishop can't get that. <laughs> I can't even get rid of it now. Uh, so, oops, uh, let's go here. Let's go here. Queen controls quite a lot of different squares on here. So if I'm looking again at a sort of dream position, I'd love to have this um, this rook out the way, and I can just deliver a mate in one. Uh, well, let's say if my if the king if the king came somehow along there, I'd love to develop a mate in one. So with that in mind, if I'm looking at a lovely forcing move here, I capture this, the king captures, I can run down with the rook, and that delivers. A checkmate so that looks pretty good so we're gonna do that and do that okay right so that's it for this video guys um, I'll, I'll, I'll do some more uh, very soon we only got through five there so hopefully try and power through some of the rest of them I hope you enjoyed this guys hope you enjoyed the thought process and I'll see you all take care bye